At one point, every kid dreams of being a pro athlete. Only very few of them will make it to the big stages, even though we often hear the pros say, everyone can do it, you just have to work enough. Really? Is that so? Can anyone just go pro? Let's check if everyone actually could be in the top 0.1% if they just worked hard enough. Throughout the video, we will show you how you can check if you could be a pro and what you can do to maximize your chances of going pro. So we will dive into three different aspects that have an influence on your chance of going pro, with the last one probably being the most important one. She does sports. Musculus palmaris longus is a muscle located in your forearm, or is it not? According to a study from 2015, this muscle is absent with a chance of 1.5 to 63.9% depending on where you live in the world. In South Africa and Zimbabwe, for example, about 98.5% have palmaris longus, while some studies came to the conclusion that only 36.1% have it in Turkey. On a global scale, about 85% have this muscle. At the end of the video, we will show you how you can easily check if you have it. People who don't have PL often don't even know that they are missing a muscle because in everyday life, it doesn't really play that much of a role, since it most likely only assists other muscles when gripping something or rotating the wrist. So in 2016, a group of scientists decided to investigate whether Palmaris longus plays a role in pro sports, and what they found was pretty surprising. The researchers compared 642 participants. They recorded data on whether the individuals were elite athletes or recreational athletes, what type of sports they were doing, if the sport requires holding something, if so with one hand or with two hands, and of course if Palmaris longus was absent or not. Note that when doing scientific studies, you have to get rid of everything that could make your data inaccurate. In this case, the scientists excluded the data of 29 participants because they were only doing sport for about one hour per month, which was classified as not doing sport. Since the subject of the study was to find the relevance of PL when going pro, it makes sense to remove the data of those who are not athletes or who do not have the ambition of going pro. So here's what they found. In sports which require a cylindrical grip with the dominant hand, like tennis or badminton, Palmaris longus was present in about 79% of recreational athletes, while it was present at around 96% in elite athletes, so significantly more. The same applies for sports which require a two-handed cylindrical grip, like rowing or canoeing. 60% of the recreational athletes and 90% of the pro athletes had the muscle in that case. In their conclusion, the researchers speculate why this might be the case. Quote, the Palmaris longus may provide athletes with a larger pool of muscle fibers that can be recruited for strength and endurance, or a greater pool of proprioceptors that can contribute to superior grip precision. That basically means that if you have more muscle fiber, you might be having an advantage when it comes to targeting specific muscles. So if you need an excuse why you didn't become a pro gymnast or the next Roger Federer, maybe check if the reasons for that could be a muscle palmaris longus, we will check later if you have one. By the way, if you like these types of sports science videos, feel free to leave a comment or at least subscribe to the channel. Thank you. What is the difference between Usain Bolt and Elliot Kipchoge? Obviously, Usain Bolt is a sprinter while Kipchoge is a marathoner. But if you would have them switch disciplines, they would probably still be decent athletes, but definitely not the greatest of all time. In fact, there's one thing that would make it impossible for Usain Bolt to become a world record marathoner and for Kipchoge to become a record-breaking sprinter. What makes them different is their natural physiology. They have two different kinds of muscles. While Kipchoge has mostly type 1 fiber muscles, also known as slow twitch fiber muscles, Usain Bolt has mostly type 2 fiber muscles, also known as fast twitch fiber muscles. The different types of muscles serve different purposes. As you might have guessed, the slow twitch fiber muscles are beneficial for slow, continuous and enduring activities, while the fast twitch fiber muscles are mostly used for fast, reactive and powerful activities. If you want to learn the exact differences in physiology and work, let us know in the comments and we will make a video on them in the future. So if you're born with more type 1 fiber muscles, are you stuck with endurance sports for the rest of your life? Well, yes and no. 
Usually you're born with muscles that are 50-50 type 1 and type 2 fibers. Depending on your style of training, you can work on building the type you need more for your sport. If you do a lot of plyometrics and heavyweight low reps exercises, you are most likely going to gain more type 2 fiber muscles than type 1 compared to when doing the complete opposite. So you can influence this aspect of your physiology with training. But of course, there are exceptions and in this case the exceptions are what is important. To become a pro in a sport that requires mostly physical performance like running, biking, swimming, some kinds of skiing, high or long jump, you must have exceptional physiology because there's so much competition. So if you were born with a 60-40 distribution of muscle fiber, 60% type 2 and 40% type 1 fiber, you naturally have an advantage in sprinting over those who are born with a 50-50 but also they will outrun you when going for a marathon. Also, if two people train the same amount, but have two different muscle fiber physiologies, which basically everyone has, everyone has slightly different physiologies, they will most likely end up with two different results. Pro sprinters, for example, can have muscle containing up to 71% of type two fibers. That's something that's almost impossible to reach with just training when starting at 50-50. Can you guess the following numbers? How tall is the average NBA player? About six foot six, so almost two meters. How many NBA players are under six feet? Three. Here's another one. How much longer is Michael Phelps' wingspan than his height? 3.5 inches, so 10 centimeters. How much longer are an average human's arms than their height? Just 0.5 inches, so about 1.2 centimeters. There are tons of examples which show what freakish body types pro athletes have. Normally, this is due to a very simple reason. Some body types give mechanical benefits, which are obviously beneficial in some sports. Being tall is beneficial in basketball since you can reach over your opponents. Having long reach in swimming means you can make longer strokes. Having long legs is ideal for running and hurdling and so on and so on. Of course, there are exceptions in every sport. Nate Robinson was only 5'9", so about 175 centimeters, but still won the dunk contest. Tomoru Honda, a Japanese swimmer, has a wingspan of under 5'11", so less than 180 centimeters, and of course, Speedy Gonzalez's legs are about one foot long. But these are exceptions and make less than a percent of the already small number in pro athletes. It doesn't look good for you if you aren't a freak of nature, but there is hope. Let's now look at how you can maximize your chances of going pro. First up, be completely honest with yourself. You know how good you are in a sport. Now think about how much effort you have to put into that sport to make it to the top. If you haven't got a sport yet, maybe consider approaching your career a little different. Try figuring out if you have more type 1 or type 2 muscle fiber. Then decide if you start doing endurance or explosive sports. Also check if you have Palmaris Longus. Pinch your hand to touch your thumb and your pinky. Now you should see your palmaris longus appear on your forearm. If you don't have the muscle, consider choosing a sport that doesn't require much hand strength or coordination. Last but not least, pick a sport that fits your body frame. Long arms, quite tall and strong shoulders, but not good at playing ball? Try swimming. Skinny, long legs and always being pushed around in football or rugby? Try running. Good but not great at sprinting? Maybe try football. There's one last important thing. Even if being a pro athlete seems like having a great life, doing what you love, not having to worry about a boring office job and chilling with all kinds of superstars, it's not always like that. Being a pro means sacrificing a lot, being in great shape most of the time of the year and a single seemingly minor injury can cost you the rest of your career. So maybe consider doing what you love as a hobby, stay healthy and take care of your body. With that being said, make sure to like and subscribe and check out our other sports science videos.